All right, lads, welcome back to me podcast, Cheaper Than Therapy. Mick Thomas here. How are you feeling today? Uh, thanks for liking, subscribing, sharing, coming back, listening to me anywhere you want to on any platform, as you know, wherever you get your podcast from, um, Spotify, iTunes, all of them, all of them, Stitcher, uh, I could just sit here all day, wherever people just yelling out the window, wherever you get your information from, that's where you can find me. Um, head over to YouTube if you want to, if you want to just look at me, don't see why you would, but if you, you know, sometimes I say that because I might say something, my facial expression might say it's, uh, I'm only joking, whereas the audio would get me in trouble, but, um, I'm sitting here in another snowy day here on Long Island, um, but I wanted to reach out to you and just kind of say for, like, as I'm, this is, I think, episode 95, I'm not sure when it's coming out. I'm sure it's on, coming out on, on its regular Monday morning. But uh, I would like to apologize t- to you, uh, the listeners and viewers, because the last few episodes, um, I kind of rushed through through them. And that's not what we deserve, right? I don't, I shouldn't be that kind of, not lazy, but be that scattered and try just to rush through the podcast and not take my time with the content. And you, of course don't want to listen to the ramblings of a fucking deranged Irishman. So I would like to apologize to you, the listeners slash viewers of the Cheaper Than Therapy podcast. And and as I, as I, as I, you know, crawl to the, to the hundred episode coming up, I'm hoping that we, we do, um, you know, we get, we get better. We, we learn from each other, don't we? And we move on. So like I said, I am here in a, in a basement, on a, on another snowy New York day, my cat is now locked in. For those of you who don't know, I posted on Facebook that the storm happened last week, and I let my fucking cat out, and the cat just disappeared, never came back. And I was kind of, you know, was I concerned? Yeah, I suppose because I'm everyone knows I'm not cruel. I don't like cats at all in any way, but I'm still not cruel. I don't wish them dead, right? I don't, I don't wish all cats would go away. I just not fond of the animals. Um, I had another story about a cat thing when I was younger, and uh, I think I told it already in another episode. So if I didn't, I'm going to go back and listen. If not, I'll tell it on another day. It is funny slash tragic. But uh, yeah, so the cat uh, is in now, locked up in the snow. But I was really kind of like, fuck, is this cat going to make it? We found the cat in the garbage, so I was told. Like, here's what happened right i still i still think the whole family got together and created this one massive lie cat dog dies last year right my dog died um and then i go away i'm on the road i think the dog died on a friday i go away on the uh, i go away for a weekend of comedy and then i get back and they find a cat in the garbage outside my house on the bed where my dead dog died so it's kind of and everyone and i don't believe in all you know people like oh god sent the cat to you don't think so because if that was the case why would he take the dog but just anyway i'm not getting into that debate right now but um you know I just think they they all lied to me and went behind my back and went to a place and got a cat because they know I hate cats. They know I like the dog and they thought maybe for some reason I would fall under this fucking whole fake belief of, yeah, you know, when one door closes, God opens and no, you just went out and you got a cat. But again, nobody's, nobody's folding, which is strange to me. Normally I could get my son, normally I could get my son to fold under questioning with a bribe or something come on i'm like tell me the truth tell me the truth where, where did the cat come from where, where did the cat really come from so i unless the plan was not to tell him because they know he would also fold under questioning so uh but anyway i got a cat and he's locked up she's locked up now i should say and uh which is annoying because have you ever tried to have any peace and quiet when a cat wants to leave the house it's fucking scratching it's crying. It's gone over. Because in New York, you can't declaw them. Which I don't agree with anyway. I think that's cruel to take away their weapons. Um, you know, and it's like... But now it's like fucking... On the... On the... On the, on the everything you're doing something on the furniture. It's like, you let me out. Until the point where you just snap and you go, get the fuck out. And you do. You want to throw... You want to throw the cat out. But apparently it's supposed to be six to seven, eight inches uh, of snow. 
today I'm going into, which fucks up my marathon, by the way. I run, I, I said, I ran a marathon last week, which I talked about, and I was going to run another one this Saturday. I was going to run another one this Saturday, being yesterday when I recorded this. And, of course, the snow blocked up all the trails and stuff, so I couldn't run. I'm not going to run on the street because people can't fucking drive, you know, with fucking texting and all that shit. And I didn't want to sidestep puddles and, you know, all that stuff. So um, I just figured I'm not going to – I'm not going to uh, – I, di I didn't do one this week. I didn't run this week, which that's my goal to do a marathon a week now. I'm not going to talk much about that because then people think you're fucking bragging. Yeah, I, I run a marathon a week. That's that's that, that's my thing now. That's my new thing. So I I couldn't do it because of the fucking snow. So now I here's what I do now. I go out. I go boxing more, which is great. I go, which is a phenomenal cardio cardio workout. So I go out to Strong Island boxing out in Shirley, Long Island. If you live on Long Island, I'm telling you, you, you must check this place out. You must, you must, must check it out. I can't talk about it enough. No matter what level you're at, there's nothing intimidating about the place. Ignore the videos of me fucking just busting ass on a bag. That's just years of experience coming through. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go out there. No matter what level you are, it's a welcoming place. It's a phenomenal workout. Um, you know, during this time of quarantine, I'm just it's a killer workout. Even yesterday morning, I went down and I joined the uh, uh, like a class, almost like a boot camp. And I thought, like, I'm going to be like, all right, let me go to this boot camp out here and fucking box with the old ladies. Again, that's what I thought. And I kicked my arse. I really kicked my arse. I got a great workout. So even though I didn't run a marathon yesterday, I still came away sore. Um, but you look around the room, there's just so many different levels there. I'm t I can't talk highly about this place enough, but it's owned and run by my good friend, uh, Christian. So I go out, I go out the other night and, uh, you know, and he's, he's a phenomenal guy, right? He's, he's one of these lads that you kind of want to be around, you know, like I, I, I kind of, I always believe that if, you know, you want to be successful in anything hang around with successful people if you want to be funny hang around with funny people like i love hanging out with comics it makes me funnier um but he's christian is you know if you want whatever you do you want to you want to lift weights you want to become bigger at lifting weights and hang out with bigger people if you want to be if you want to be smarter hang out with smarter people if you don't want to be a fucking idiot don't hang out with fucking idiots right people will smarter people will just raise your iq just by being around them that's, I mean, that's probably the best advice. You know, if you surround yourself with people that weigh you down in anything, just don't fucking hang around with them. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. But I'm telling you, you will be better for it. But anyway, so Christian is one of these guys, that guys that you want to be around, right? Very driven, very motivated, very into... He's into crypto coins, cryptocurrencies, which is a huge thing now. Remember I talked last week about the fucking stock market and all those uh, arseholes about how they want to make millions. They want to, you know, once you start making money, they just pull the plug on it and don't allow you to make money on it, which is so fucking corrupt, which is so evil. And I'm not going back into that again. But Christian is very big into that. He's got his eye on everything and he's looking at this, you know, he's trying to buy crypto coins. I can't remember the name of the crypto coin. Sorry, Christian, if you're listening, I'm probably, I know you're screaming at your... Screen of your phone, but he was saying like, "Yo, you gotta get in, buy this, buy that." And I go, "I go, okay, but what is it?" I was at the gym the other night, and I go, "What is it?" He goes, "What do you mean?" He goes, "Like, but what do you do with crypto coins?" And he goes, "Well, it just brings, yeah, but what? Like, you're not listening to me. Like, that's the thing about this stock market thing. And I used to work in finance. I used to work in the banks, and I just don't understand this, this nightmare of fucking the." crypto coins and stuff that's not tangible that doesn't exist you're buying stuff you're pulling it from the sky if i buy crypto coins what how does it have its value like at least gamestop was a place you can go and you can like it's like a swap meet for video games you can go in and you go i don't you know like i don't want this game anymore here can i give it back to you and give me five dollars off this game and then i'll come in and buy the same game you just dropped off for ten dollars and it's like a swap meet for games buy and sell and then the new game comes out and like you know only the the only the the the, the high rollers buy the brand new fucking call of duty game that came out um that's not me i'm not a gamer i'm not a gamer i do go to GameStop regular because i got two fucking kids who love video games um 
So that's why GameStop was kind of a joke. and like, the, But that's a tangible... I can walk into GameStop. I can buy... I can physically pick up a t-shirt. I bought this fucking hat at GameStop. What a coincidence, right? This Deadpool hat. So, um, you know, you could buy shit. You could buy tangible items. Or, or even online, if it wasn't, you could download a game to your system from GameStop and you could fucking play it. And it's, it's tangible. It's got to use... What is cryptocurrency? Can I buy a car with it? Can I go to the supermarket and buy and buy beans and buy all the ingredients I want to make for a burrito? Because I'm feeling constipated this week and I know the burrito will help me fucking shit. Do I buy, gonna walk in and go, yeah, there's the beans, there's some guacamole, some, some, there's some, uh, um, you know, tortillas. Here is some rice. Uh, how much would that be? That's, that's all gonna be $11. Okay. Do you take crypto coins? And they'll go, fucking no, get out of my store. I don't, I don't get the whole crypto shit. That's my point. I don't, it's not tangible. So I think it's another, it's like unicorns. If that was the case, like I'm, oh, I'm owning up, open up a no unicorn ranch. They don't exist. You don't get to see the unicorns. You don't get to touch them. You don't get to feel them, ride them, feed them. There's no petting, petting version. All right, on Saturdays, we'll let the kids come in after 12 because we got to clean up the, the unicorn shit, which as we know, it is all made of fucking fairies. So when they shit the fairies, they run everywhere. We got to catch the fairy shit. The unicorns don't exist. Fucking, you know, leprechauns don't exist. So I've been told. Um, it, it's not, these are not tangible things. Now, I, I'm sure there's, there's people listening to this right now who are again screaming, going, yeah, you fucking Irish idiot. You just take this and the value goes up because of this. And when you buy and you sell that and you trade, there's, it's just nothing. It's all stuff in the air, isn't it? Like it doesn't exist. So I'm going to invest in unicorn stock and I'm going to sell it. And I think this would be a year for unicorns because we are, you know, um, but then again, we're not really pro. We know we are pro women, but we want to be, we don't want women to be feminine, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like little girls, don't give them a doll. Don't give them a doll. Don't give them a playhouse. Don't give them Barbies. You got to give them other stuff. Like, so maybe unicorns is considered a feminine toy. It was when I was growing up. That's all I'm saying. I'm not, don't people call into the, cheaper than therapy hotline and say oh you're assuming girls like unicorns and men don't i don't know many men lads who like unicorns i really don't so i'm not gonna buy unicorns i'm not i'm not gonna you know i'm gonna i should say i am gonna buy unicorn stock that's what i'm gonna buy it and then you can you know trade it we'll all trade unicorn stock and i'll be fucking loaded for the unicorn stock that i sold because i don't get the coin that's what i'm trying to say i don't get it i can't go buy something with it i can't buy a house i can't buy a car I know hookers don't take them. That's, I've tried. Um, <laughs> right? Nobody ta nobody takes it. Nobody takes the crypto coins. That's my point. So, um, yeah. That's, so, anyway. That's, that's Christian. That's Christian. And, uh, so I get there the other night and I'm working out. And I set this goal of, like, I'm doing 25 rounds. And when I work, work out, I kind of work out. You know, I do, I, I give it me all. I, I put an effort into it. Uh, very influenced. I've always been a hard worker when it comes to the physical activity. And then now, of course, I'm a huge fan of David Goggins, which steps it up at the next level, right? If you don't know who David Goggins is, check him out. He will make you feel like shit, that you're doing nothing. I run a marathon a week now, and I still feel like a fucking pussy. So, um, so I go out, I set my, my routine, and my routine was going to be, it was going to be five rounds of shadow boxing, Five rounds of no five rounds of jump rope, five rounds of shadow boxing, ten rounds on the bag, and then I was going to do another five rounds of shadow boxing just to kind of cool down. My arms are lighter. I don't have gloves on. I'm not holding weights. Just move around, nice cool down. But in between each round, there's three minute rounds, and a bell goes right for three minutes. Thirty second alarm goes off. And then the, then the then the end of the round. Ding ding ding. You get a minute rest. But with that minute rest in between rounds, I don't rest. Right? I drop. I do. 10 push-ups, I go over, I do five pull-ups, and then I do some sort of ab exercise in between, get back up, I might get six or seven seconds rest, and then I go back, and it's just that intense all the way through it. Again, not bragging, but go out to Christian's gym and, and, and get that kind of workout in for yourself. So, I, I'm the first one on the floor to work out, and then I was the last one to finish up. It wasn't that many, it was me and this other kid, um, Blake, his name is very fucking funny kid, very, very funny kid. Hard worker, hits like a mule, um, you know, just, he's got, he's got a career in boxing, I really believe that, I really believe that, he's so young, and he's so talented and powerful, but anyway, 
So he was doing a different workout because he's trying to get back. He's got nationals coming up and he's, you know, he's doing a different workout than what I'm doing. But Christian is one on one with him. So he at the end of the at the end of it, you know, he's like, yo, Mick worked you worked harder than you today. He was the first one in here. I'm the last one to leave. Whatever, I'm paraphrasing what Christian said. So we were he goes to me, uh that Christian comes over to me and, and it, you know, he's like, you know, man, it's a fucking great workout you did tonight. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And he goes, how old are you? And I, I told him, I was, yeah, I'm, I'm 43 years of age. And he goes, <laughs> now, I know, I know Christian. I love him. I, I, I think he loves me. We have a great relationship. And I, I know what he said came out of love. And I said it to him yesterday. I told him I was going to mention it today because it kind of popped in my mind. And I know he might, but here's what he said to me when he, when he goes, how old are you? I go, I'm 43. He went, good for you. (laughs) Good for you. Good for you. Like, like I was a 90 year old who went back to school. You you ever hear those stories? Like 90 year old woman goes back and gets a degree and fuckity fuck, fuck. Um, He's like, good, good for her going back and getting her degree. Like, if you ever go to a Planet Fitness at six o'clock in the morning, that's where all the old people come out. Like, the really old people come out, and cause, and why not? They're up fucking since four, and they're just doing their little thing, right? They're doing their light weights on the machines to kind of keep the bone density going, and it's good for them. It's really good for you to be working out at any age. Um, but you see them, and you go, good for them, <laughs> good, good, good for you, good for you, Al. On the bench press machine, bench and fight. Good for you. Um, and I, and I just, I, I told him yesterday, but in the back of my head, I was like, ah, oh, cheers, man. But I was just laughing. I was like, and you, like, yeah, forty three years of age. But I don't, you don't feel old. I don't, I don't look at age as a number. I, I don't have gray hairs. I mean, maybe one or two popping in, but I don't like, I got one or two things here in the beard. Look, three, four, like, th- right. And it's, it's. It's fucking funny, you know, and I, you don't feel old, you know, talking to people, working out with people, you know, I know I don't kind of look my age and that's not anything. That's because I just, it's just the way I am, I suppose, the, my genetics and the way I, the way I, um, I guess, live my life, I guess, um, eating healthy, working out, you know, try keep the stress off. And I think that's, that's what I'm doing. So, but he, but you never, you don't feel old until you're online. And the other day I was online, I was signing up for something. I was taking another class because, as you know, I'm studying uh, drug and alcohol abuse and all that stuff. So I get online and uh, like you don't feel old until you're put in your month. And I go, March, put in put in your day. I'm not telling you the day because uh, I'm not one of those guys. I don't put it on Facebook I don't want I don't want to feel important when I wake up on March something something and go all these people love me. No they don't. Nobody they don't. They just Facebook told them, "Hey, go and tell him." Cuz the computer tells us what to do now, right? So the computer goes, "The fucking go over, tell him it's his happy birthday." And then you feel like a good friend. I text my friends on their birthday. I do. I literally go into my phone and I text them. I don't put on Social media, happy birthday. I may have done it in the past, so I don't want to sound like a liar, but I don't like to do that. I don't go onto Facebook and go, oh, it's fucking John's birthday. Happy birthday, John. I don't care enough. Fa- Facebook told me, so I just typed it. I just typed it in. Uh, I don't. The machines will not win with me. That's the point. I was talking about this. I know I'm rambling. I want to sidestep about this the other day, about the robots, how the robots are taking over. I was at Stop and Shop, and they have this. I don't know if I t- spoke about this already, but they have this... Um, they have this robot that goes up and down the aisles. Did I talk about this already? And it goes up and down the aisles. And what it does is it finds like, so you knock over your ragu, the ragu smashes, and then the robot stands over the ragu. And you would think the robot would clean it up, but the robot goes, no, Jeff, spillage over here, clean it up. So we are fucking working for the machines already. The machine, you think the, the, the robot would stop with his big googly eyes and a smiley face to not make it not intimidating, right? Um, because if they weren't intimidating, like the Terminator, right? The Terminator would have been made look like someone like I don't know who's not like who's not an intimidating like Pee Wee Herman. Pee Wee Herman, the Terminator would be. Imagine like if if they weren't meant to scare like. Ah! Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's a good impression or not. So he would the the fucking robot would come over and it's like a shape like a T by the way. It's not like a. 
doesn't walk or anything it just rolls up and down the aisles it's like a, just a giant shaped tea uh, about seven foot tall uh, an upside down tea by the way because if it was the other way it would just fucking top over wouldn't it and just smash so he comes over and he stands over the ragu and then he calls the human over to clean it up fucking weird but anyway so I don't send people their birthdays but you only feel old I think when so I put in March I put in the date and then when it asks for the year right and you start scrolling back then you gotta roll back the years that's when you feel old that's when you feel like when you're starting to watch this fucking numbers go by, this history go back and forth in front of you, right? You're starting to scroll up and all of a sudden you're going like, oh, fuck, yeah, I remember this television show. This came out. Oh, really? Yeah. And then you keep going. You're like, fucking hell, 9-11 happened. Jesus Christ, you keep going. Now what happened? And now you go back and say, oh, shit, fuck, you see Princess Diana died. You keep going back. Nintendo first came out. Oh, look, Sonic the Hedgehog, I remember that. Then you keep going again. You're like, oh, the Berlin Wall came down. Look at this. Keep fucking going. Look, you just keep going. Freddie Mercury is dead. Live Aid happened. Princess Diana, she got fucking killed in the thing, in the tunnel on the way. Look, someone, some cunt shot Ronald Reagan. It just fucking keeps going. Dolly the Sheep was born. Remember that? The Good Friday Agreement in Northern Ireland. You just keep going fucking back. Chernobyl happened. You know, you keep going back. More AIDS. Some other cunt shot this cunt. Just fucking all this stuff going all the way back. And then you end up back in 1977. Like fucking Elvis Presley died. Who the fuck is Elvis Presley? That's when you fucking feel old. When you just see history, you know, some cunt shot JR. It's all in there. It's all fucking in that big one. And you're like, holy shit. And that's when you kind of feel like, I'm an old cunt, aren't I? Like, I've just watched, you're just watching this history unfold right in front of your eyes. And that's, you know, that's that's when you kind of, when you feel old. That's, that's, all I'm, that's all I'm trying to say. You know, that's, that's, that's the point I'm trying to make. And then you go, you know, you're watching things like, you're like, fucking, you know, you, you look at Cobra Kai, right? Which, let's be honest, right? Cobra Kai, those are guys that got old. And you think, like, I watched that show, and I, I know it's a hugely pop, popular show. And I, I fucking, I watched season one on YouTube before it went to Netflix. I watched it with my son. My son made me pay for it. It was like YouTube, Red, Red Tube. Isn't Red Tube a porn site? Be careful, if you Google RedTube now on your phones or on your computers or wherever you're watching this or listening to this, I bet porn will come up. But YouTube Red, I think it's YouTube Red, which I can't unsubscribe to for some reason. The fuckers won't let me out of it. They won't let me out of it. $12 a month comes out of my credit card. I fucking can't get out of it. I can't get out of it. No matter what I try, they won't let me, they won't let me out of it. But my problem with, like, I watched Cobra Kai and it's the greatest crock of shit. It's the, it really is. The acting is horrendous, and everybody's like, yeah, but, you know, isn't it... If you don't know what Cobra Kai is, if you lived under a rock, it's basically the follow-up to Karate Kid about what happened to these guys after he fucking did the crane kick into the face. Um, You know, and I was like, weren't you 14 or 15? The show should be called Get Over It. That's what the show should be called. Just get over it. He kicked you in the face, and now all of a sudden your life was ruined. Your life, like... That's the weird thing. And it's, I think it's an American thing as well. Like, I knew a couple back in Ireland who were like this, actually. They had, they were high school sweethearts and they're still married to this day, right? And you see that all over America and they talk about it like it's this accomplishment. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, they're high school sweethearts. Meaning they met when they were fucking children and now they're adults and they're still together. Like, that's not something to be great. Like, go out. Get different women. Get different men. Right, if you're a man and you've just had the same woman your whole life, that's going to be boring. And just go out there, get a few different, few different women. Maybe suck a dick. I don't do something different. Do fucking something different. Maybe try it. You don't know. You don't know. Maybe try. Maybe go out and you and and then all of a sudden, you know, you're with your high school sweetheart and you're like, all right, this is fine. And then all of a sudden, you go to a doctor, a proctologist. Can't say it right. Go for a call, ask me someone takes a finger up your ass, like, oh my god, I fucking like now I gotta find a girl that's gonna put a finger up my arse. You go back to your high school sweetheart, you go, Becky, Becky, what? I like a finger in my arse, me. And she's like, I'm not doing that. Now you've got to walk around your whole life with someone that won't stick a finger up your arse. That's right. Not to be com- I'm not saying finger up your arse is the same as the karate ki- or the cobra kai, but it is kind of, you know, not not a great it's just a weird fucking show. It should be called Just Get Over It. That's all, that's all it is. And it, it's the worst acting, the worst acting. And people then talk about, you know, nostalgia. Nostalgia is shit. 
if things were good, like they were back when you knew you watched it, you'd still be watching. Like when you go to someone's house and they've got these DVD, I don't know who has fucking DVDs anymore, but you see a DVD collection, like they bought the A Team. The A Team. I used to love that show as a kid. Watch it now. It's the greatest crock of shit ever. The only thing I think you might be able to keep from nostalgia is probably music because some of the songs might... And even that's fucking shit. You know, if you especially go to the eras of rock, you know, not not rock, but heavy metal. Like, you go back and you listen to Guns N' Roses. Oh, that's wrong. That's that's fucking good. But uh, Twisted Sister, something like that. At the time, you might listen to it. Like, that's fucking great. But now you're like, Ugh, it's kind of like music was shit. Like, everything was shit. Everything was shit. The nostalgia, like, go back and watch a TV show or a movie that was made from when you were five. It's fucking shit. That's all I'm trying, like, and people want to, you know, keep this nostalgia and, like, and to keep stuff in their basements. That's a huge thing, too. You know what I mean? Oh, I got this thing in the basement. Fucking why? If you loved it, and if it meant something to you, it wouldn't be in a box in your basement or in your shed. It would be in on your mantelpiece. It would be somewhere in the room where you could see it. Stop keeping shit. Oh, when my son was small, he made me this. Fucking get rid of it. Doesn't matter. You still have... Look, at the son is right there in front of you. He He's fine. If your daughter's right there in front of you, they're fine. You don't need to keep downstairs in a fucking moldy box underneath another bunch of moldy boxes a fucking picture of of a fucking, I don't know, of an Easter egg that they made one time in school. It's, it's all shit. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Nostalgia is bollocks. What did Tony Soprano say? Remember when is the lowest form of conversation. I agree. I agree. All right. So the Cobra Kai, that's all it is. Bad acting and them talk. And every, like, they had to bring back every cast member of the show too. Like, even the girl who was, remember in, in the second one? And she was up up in a fucking tree and during the windstorm. Even brought the same, even brought, they couldn't get like another grown woman from Okinawa, which wasn't Okinawa because they tried to make fucking Los Angeles look like fucking China. Kind of like Sons of Anarchy did when they tried to make LA look like Ireland. Total bollocks. So you get this girl and you take her from a tree and you go like, they, they went out and they found her and they brought her back, gave her another act. Like every person who was ever in a karate kid got another, got to come back again in this product placement bullshit show. Uh, everything was product placement. Everything was from fucking start to finish. Someone comes home. Howie, how are you? I was online at the mall buying one of these brand new water bottles. You should drink them. They're really good for you. And I ran into your friend Johnny. Like, that's how it, the whole fucking show. The It's just, it's dog shit. Wall to wall dog shit. And here's the thing. Daniel LaRusso, every time he speaks is a metaphor. Every time he speaks is a fucking metaphor. You're sitting there having dinner. Could you could you pass, pass the salt, please? I remember when Mr. Miyagi would pass the salt. Fuck me, just give me the salt, will you? This fucking food is shit. I need salt to get put some fucking taste and texture into the shitty meatloaf that you fucking made. I don't I don't like the show. That's all that's what I'm trying to say. That it's just nostalgia is bullshit. Maybe that's the name of the episode. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. Um But yeah, anyway, if you haven't seen Cobra Kai, it's don't watch it. You're fine. You're fine. I, that's it. I just summed it up. It's basically everybody who couldn't get over something that happened when they were fucking 15. Can you imagine being something that bothers you when you were 15 and you're still going on? All right, look, there are traumatic things that happen to people at the age of 15, right? Some people, some, I mean, listen, listen, I'm contradicting myself because why I'm bringing it back to the start of the podcast, talk about my cat. Why don't I like cats? I'll tell you why. I was seven years old, walking to school, and all of a sudden, one cat runs between my legs. I'm like, all right, that's weird. I see a cat ran right be- right between my legs. Then it was chased by at least 10 fucking dogs. And I, I, the cat was trying to get away from the 10 dogs, rightly so. It's not the cat's fault. Cat runs under my legs. Dogs come in, fucking hit me. My legs go up. I come down the air and I smash my head on the concrete. To this day, there is a lump. There is a, a lump about this big, not a golf. Like everyone says a golf ball, right? Isn't it like things are described... Like, oh, it's a golf ball, a size, hailstones the size of a golf ball. Hailstones almost the size of a golf ball. Just say they were fucking big hailstones. That's all you got to say. You don't have to, you know what I mean? Anyway, so I have a lump about this big on the back of my head um, from where I smashed it on. And I think that's the psychological wiring that made me go, I fucking hate cats now. Because if that cat, if that cat had ran around me, maybe the dogs wouldn't have. That's, again, full circle. Full, full circle again. Um, so, yeah, lock your cats up. Don't watch Cobra Kai. It's 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 shit. 
and you're never as old as you feel. So they're the messages I would like to give you today for this week's episode of Cheaper Than Therapy. Thanks so much for listening, lads. Thanks for liking, subscribing, sharing. It means a lot to me, please. If you're on YouTube watching it, just hit the subscribe button and maybe tell people about it, right? So anyway, thanks so much for listening. Uh, like I said, liking, subscribing, sharing. Um, any messages, send them to my Instagram, Mick Thomas Comedy. And uh, as usual, um, I hope you're well. Stay safe. And as always, wash your hands, you dirty fuckers. All right, good luck to you. Good luck to you.